Now you have chosen to study the module on the microbial products in food. Many aspects of our everyday lives are influenced in some way by microorganisms. In our earlier chapters, we have discussed their role in food industry. They are responsible for the production of much of what we eat and drink and synthesize industrially usable chemicals. In this module, we shall look at some of the ways in which the activities of microorganisms have been harnessed for the benefit of humans and developed on an industrial scale. Let us see the history of food microbiology. Microorganisms are present everywhere on earth including humans, animals, plants and other living creatures, soil, water and atmosphere. They can multiply everywhere except in the atmosphere. Together their numbers for exceed all other living cells on this planet. They were the first living cells to inhabit the earth more than 3 billion years ago and since then they have played important roles, many of which are beneficial to other living systems. Fermentation was used extensively by many societies, not only to preserve foods but also as a method to produce various types of desirable foods from milk, meat, fish, eggs, grains, fruits and vegetables. Following the discovery of the ubiquitous existence of microorganisms, mainly bacteria and yeast, by Leeuwenhoek around the 1670s, some individuals started associating the possible role of these organisms with food spoilage, food fermentation and foodborne diseases. The major development of ideas on the possible roles of organisms in foods and their scientific proof were initiated by Pasteur in the 1870s followed by many other scientists before the end of the 19th century. This paved the way for the establishment of early food microbiology in the 20th century. Among the microorganisms, some molds, yeast, bacteria and viruses are important in food for their ability to produce food and food ingredients. The production of foodstuffs as a result of microbial fermentation reactions predates recorded history. Of course, until relatively recent times, nothing was known of the part played by microorganisms, so the production of beer, cheese and vinegar would not have been the carefully controlled processes that are used today. Indeed, it was only with the development of isolation techniques towards the end of the 19th century that it became possible to use pure cultures in food production for the first time. The fermentation of foodstuffs became a science. Now we shall discuss how these microorganisms are important in food biotechnology. Microorganisms produce many products. Primary metabolites are the microbial metabolites which are secreted during tropophase of the microbial growth. Hence, these are growth dependent metabolites. These include vitamins, amino acids, organic acids, alcohols, enzymes, biopolymers, single cell protein and mushrooms. Secondary metabolites or the microbial products which are produced during the idiophase of microbial growth. They are called as growth independent metabolites. These include toxins and antibiotics. The applications of microorganisms in various food industry are as follows. Namely, the alcoholic beverages like wine and beer, dairy products like bread, the microbial proteins, and last, the production of biochemicals, namely amino acids, organic acids, vitamins, and enzymes. Now, let us discuss about these microbial products. First, let us see about alcoholic beverages. There is evidence that alcoholic drinks including beer and wine were being produced thousands of years before the Christian era 
making them among the earliest known examples of the exploitation of microorganisms by humans. Ethanol results from the fermentation process that is the conversion of sugar to carbon dioxide and ethanol. That is 66H12O6 is converted to CH3CH2OH and carbon dioxide. One important alcoholic beverage is wine. Wine can be made from almost any fruit juice with a high sugar content. But still, the vast majority of commercially produced wines derive from the fermentation of the sugar present in grapes. Such fermentation reactions may be initiated by yeast naturally found on the grape skin. However, the results of such fermentations are erratic and may be unpalatable. In commercial winemaking, the juice resulting from the crushed grapes is treated with sulfur dioxide to kill off the natural microflora and then inoculated with the yeast Saccharomyces cerevisiae and its variety Ellipsoides. Specially developed strains are used which produce a higher percentage of alcohol that is ethanol than naturally occurring yeast. Fermentation proceeds for a few days at a temperature of 22 to 27 degrees centigrade for red wines. It's lower for whites after which the wine is separated from the skins by pressing. This is followed by aging in oak barrels, a process that may last several months and during which the flavor develops. Malolactic fermentation is a secondary fermentation carried out on certain types of wine. Malic acid, which has a sharp taste, is converted to the milder lactic acid imparting smoothness to the wine. Another important alcoholic beverage is beer. Beer is produced by the fermentation of barley grain. The method varies according to the type of beer but follows a series of clearly defined steps. Grain, unlike grapes, contains no sugar to serve as a substrate for the yeast, so before fermentation can begin. It is soaked in water and allowed to germinate. This stimulates the enzyme production necessary for the conversion of starch to maltose, a process called as malting. Malting is the process whereby grain is soaked in water to initiate germination and activate starch digesting enzymes. An additional source of starch may be introduced during the next stage that is mashing in which the grains are ground up in warm water and further digestion takes place. Mashing releases soluble material from the grain in preparation for fermentation. The liquid phase or wort is drained off and hops are added. They impart flavor and color to the finished product and also possess antimicrobial properties thereby helping to prevent contamination. The mixture is boiled, inactivating the enzymes, precipitating the proteins and killing off any microorganisms. In the next stage, the wort is filtered and transferred to the fermentation vessel where yeast is introduced. Hops are the dried flasks of a type of wine. They were originally added to beer because of their antimicrobial properties but were soon found to improve the flavor too. Hops are added to the wort after boiling. Two species of yeast are commonly used in the brewing process, both belonging to the genus Saccharomyces. Saccharomyces cerevisiae is mainly used in the production of darker bees whereas Saccharomyces carbogensis gives lighter colored, less cloudy, lager type beers. Cells of Saccharomyces cerevisiae are carried to the surface of the fermentation by carbon dioxide bubbles while Saccharomyces carbogensis cells form a sediment at the bottom. Fermentation takes about a week to complete at a temperature appropriate for each type of yeast. Saccharomyces carbogensis prefers somewhat lower temperatures than Saccharomyces cerevisiae. 
Following fermentation, the beer is allowed to age or rest for some months in the cold. Beers destined for canning or bottling are filtered to remove remaining microorganisms. Beers typically have an alcohol content of around 4%. Small amounts of other secondary products such as amyl alcohol and acetic acid are also produced and contribute to the beer's flavor. Next, we will discuss about the dairy products. Milk can be fermented to produce a variety of products including butter, yogurt and cheese. In each case, acid produced by the fermentation process causes coagulation or curdling of the milk proteins. Renin is traditionally derived from the stomachs of calves but nowadays is more frequently the product of genetically engineered bacteria loving its conception even by strict vegetarians. In cheese making, this coagulation is effected by the addition of the protease renin or by the action of lactic acid bacteria specifically Streptococcus lactis and Streptococcus cramaris. Coagulation allows the separation of the semi-solid curd from the liquid whey. The subsequent steps in the cheese making process depend on the specific type of cheese. Following separation, the curd of most cheeses is pressed and shaped removing excess liquid and forming the texture. During the ripening process, salt is often added and flavor develops due to continuing microbial action on the protein and fat components of the cheese. In some cases, a fresh inoculation of microorganisms is made at this point such as the addition of penicillium spores to camembert and brie. The length of the ripening period varies from a month to more than a year according to type with the harder cheeses requiring the longer periods. Cheeses are classified according to their texture. Unripened cheeses are those that have not undergone the aging or ripening process during which additional flavors develop. Fermentation is initiated by the inoculation of a staticulture of lactic acid bacteria to convert lactose to lactic acid. Heterolactic fermenters such as leuconostac are added when aromatic flavoring compounds such as diacetyl are required. Yogurt is another milk derivative. Thickened milk is exposed to the action of two bacteria, Streptococcus thermophilus and Lactobacillus bulgaricus, both of which ferment lactose present in milk into lactic acid. In addition, Lactobacillus bulgaricus contributes aromatics responsible for imparting flavor to the yogurt. Other dairy products such as soda cream and buttermilk are also produced by means of the fermentative properties of species of streptococci and lactobacilli. The bread is the important product of the dairy product. The biological agent responsible for bread production is yeast. In fact, baker's yeast and brewer's yeast are just different strains of the same species. Saccharomyces cerevisiae. In bread making, aerobic rather than anaerobic conditions are favored, so sugar present in the duff is converted all the way to carbon dioxide rather than to alcohol. It is this that causes the bread to rise. Any small amount of ethanol that may be produced is evaporated during the baking process. Many other popular foodstuffs are the result of microbial fermentation processes. These include vinegar, soy sauce and sauerkraut. Silage is animal fodder made from the fermentation of grass and other plant material by the action of lactic acid bacteria. Next important microbial product is microbial protein. The dried cells of microorganisms used as food or feed are collectively known as microbial protein. The term microbial protein was replaced by a new term single cell protein. These are mushrooms, the stacked fruiting bodies of certain species of Basidiomycetes, 
notably agaricus by sporus these are grown in the dark at favorable temperatures in order to stimulate the production of fruiting bodies other microbial food sources include certain algae that is seaweed which form an important part of the diet in some parts of the world and bacteria and yeast grown in bulk a single cell protein for use as a protein rich animal food supplement the cyanobacterium spirulina has been collected from dried up ponds for use as a food supplement since time immemorial and is now available easily the microorganisms are also useful in the production of significant biochemicals many products of microbial metabolism find an application in the food and other industries these include amino acids steroids enzymes and antibiotics microbial growth conditions are adjusted so that production of the metabolite in question takes place at an optimal rate often an unnaturally high rate of production is achieved by the use of a mutated or genetically engineered strain of microorganism or by manipulating the culture conditions to favor excess metabolite production first let us see about amino acids in 1908 k ikeda discovered glutamic acid while working on flavoring components of kelp after acid hydrolysis and fractionation of kelp and neutralization with cosetic soda these treatments enhanced the taste of kelp this was the birth of the use of monosodium glutamate as a flavor enhancing compound microbially produced amino acids are used in the food industry in medicine and as raw materials in the chemical industry the one produced in the greatest quantities by far is glutamic acid from the bacterium cornibacterium glutamicum which is a gram positive bacteria the amino acids aspartic acid and phenylalanine are components of the artificial sweetener aspartame and are also synthesized on a large scale next is the organic acids organic acids are produced through the metabolism of carbohydrates they are either the terminal products of emp pathway such as lactic acid and propionic acid or the products of incomplete oxidation of sugars such as citric acid etagonic acid and gluconic acid a third type of product is also obtained from the dehydrogenation of alcohol in the presence of oxygen namely acetic acid a number of organic acids are produced industrially by microbial means most notably citric acid which has a wide range of applications in the food and pharmaceutical industries this is mostly produced as a secondary metabolite by the large scale culture of the mold aspergillus niger vitamins which are produced by microbes to have a vital role for humans certain microorganisms serve as a ready source of vitamins microorganisms are capable of synthesizing the vitamins in fact the bacteria in the gut of humans can produce some of the vitamins which if appropriately absorbed can partially meet the body's requirements it is an accepted fact that after administration of strong antibiotics to humans additional conception of vitamins is recommended microorganisms can be successfully used for the commercial production of many of the vitamins example thymine riboflavin pyridoxine folic acid pantothenic acid biotin vitamin b12 ascorbic acid beta carotene ergosterol and so on in many cases these can be synthesized less expensively by chemical means however riboflavin by the mold ashbia gossypii and vitamin b12 
by the bacteria Propionibacterium shermani and Pseudomonas denitrificans are produced by large scale microbial fermentation. Microorganisms play a partial role in the production of ascorbic acid that is called as vitamin C. Initially, glucose is reduced chemically to sorbitol, which is then oxidized by a strain of acetobacter suboxidants to the hexose sorbose. Chemical modifications convert this to ascorbic acid. Next, let us see about the enzymes. Enzymes of fungal and bacterial origin have been utilized for many centuries in a variety of processes. It is now possible to isolate and purify the enzymes needed for a specific process and the worldwide market is currently worth around a billion pounds. Some applications of microbially produced enzymes are as follows. Renin and lipase which can be used in cheese manufacturing industries. Pectinase which are very very essential for fruit juice extraction and as well as for coffee bean extraction. Amylase is used to improve the bread dough quality and also haste removal in case of beer production. Amylase, glucoamylase and glucose isomerase, they are the important enzymes which have a major role in fructose syrup production. Syrups and modified starches are used in a wide range of foodstuffs including soft drinks, confectionery and ice cream as well as having a wealth of other applications. Different enzymes or combinations of enzymes are used to produce the desired consistencies and physical properties. High fructose corn syrup called as HFCS is a sweetener used in a multitude of food products. It is some 75% sweeter than sucrose and has several other advantages. HFCS which is a high fructose corn syrup is a mixture of fructose, dextrose and disaccharides and it is produced by the action of a series of three enzymes on the starch of corn. Alpha amylase first hydrolysis the internal alpha 1,4 glycosidic bonds of starch but is not able to degrade ends of the chain. The resulting dye and oligosaccharides are broken down to the monomer glucose by the action of glucoamylase. Then finally glucose isomerase converts some of the glucose into its isomer fructose. To conclude, this module has presented the importance of microorganisms in food, predominant microorganisms associated with food and various products from microorganisms. These microbial products have a significant role in food biotechnology. These products of microbes are very much useful for humans as well as in large scale level. This module thus has summarized the different types of microbial product used in the food industry among which few of their products will be dealt in detail in the subsequent modules.